uh, stop burning. So this uh, system keeps burning and the total energy in the uh, solid propulsion, these are large motors with uh, 20, uh, 20 to 30 tons of propellants burning. So the energy impulse variations because of the uh, ISP variations, burn rate variations, the uh, property variations, it will lead to a energy difference or a velocity difference in the order of uh, 300 to 500 meter per second. When I say 300 to 500 uh, meter per second, it will take you as uh, far away as thousands of kilometers. So that is where the guidance philosophy had to be uh, uh, perfect. So we could do that and that is how all the Agni solid series A1, A2, A3, uh, A2 prime, A5 are and uh, come up with this technology. Uh, these are uh, some of the motors shown. We generally de design the motor and then we have to go through a static test. That means we will fire the motor and see the performance as intended it is coming. Always solid, solid propulsion has three bounds, the upper, lower and the nominal. If they are well within this bound, then only acceptable for the mission. And uh, right now, depending on the casing material, again, uh, materials what we use for the uh, missile casing, or any uh, packages is of utmost important because again the weight, the structural uh, um, strength, weight versus structural strength, it should withstand the pressure, high pressure vessels, it is acting once it starts burning. So managing steel, Kevlar, the composite uh, structures, the carbon fiber uh, composite uh, motors have, right now we have come to a composite system which is looking black in color that which is equivalent like half the weight of the system or uh, the what is in the metallic one, the steel ones, managing steel or the 15 CDR C steel, half the weight reduction we get. So that much is the benefit to the uh, overall system. We are now into the technologies like high energy propellants, uh, rocket motor casing with the composite rocket motor. We are going ahead with the composite carbon nanotube reinforced motor more and more strength to the system with lesser weight than gel propellants. Uh, this again, motor performance is if we are able to test in a high altitude, this vacuum impulse versus the actual impulse what we will get, that also can be ex estimated to the uh, perfectness. So that we are working on. Other than the main pro propulsion system, we need to have something called velocity trimming packages. If any shortfall has come, always we can augment by using this uh, velocity trimming packages, small uh, liquid uh, thrusters which will give and as on demand it will be stop firing. So that is for fine accuracy uh, velocity uh, requirements. Exact to, uh, to the order of 0.1 meter per second we can achieve this accuracy of the velocity of the missile. Then retro motors that is by name itself it is uh, clear that they are uh, for retarding force generation. So if you want to, for suppose in a stage separation, <coughs> thus uh, if you want to retard this, this stage which has already burned, you use retro motors for the spent stage and the rest of the stage goes ahead with the propellant, further uh, burning the rockets. So that uh, purpose we have, then divert thrusters in all four directions, if you want to have control, you can have uh, four directional uh, divert thrusters as and when required by the control. The multi-pulse uh, motors, this is also um, a new development that is uh, some of the, uh, there are two stages of uh, within one rocket casing, there will be two uh, motor performance, there is one, the whole, uh, one portion of it burns and later on towards the terminal end you want more and more energy for uh, controlling and uh, guiding, then you can again have that motor fired which will give you uh, more um, um, energy management. At any time of requirement, you can fire that second uh, pulse motor. Then comes the aerodynamics. The aerodynamics is the shape of the uh, missile, what we make. If you have any protrusions like control surfaces, the wire tunnel which is running across the missile from uh, uh, payload stage to the first stage, these things contribute to the drag uh, along with the lifting force. These are all disturbance force coming to the missile which has to be countered by the control. So the controllability uh, and aerodynamics, the factors which affect the aerodynamics, 
you would have heard that Agni 3 first flight was a failure. We were all knowing the aerodynamics, we were all knowing the technology, but that motor, what we developed was a 2 meter dia motor, which had uh, uh, almost 30 ton propellant burning. The initial flow, just by ignition, at the launch uh, place, the amount of energy which is coming, and when it starts uh, moving up the atmosphere, the aerodynamic uh, flow, the jet, starts expanding. The shape of the profile starts expanding and uh, we had provided a thermal protection system so that the flow doesn't enter back into the missile uh, packages or the base road we call. But so unfortunately that the intensity of the flow interaction between the uh, propellant uh, flow and the aerodynamic flow or the air flow in the atmosphere was, known, no, was not known to us because we didn't have any facility, that CFP facilities. See, this is a technology where we are totally denied uh, any information on uh, missile technology like Agni class. So we, didn't, uh, we were not even able to get CFP analysis platforms and softwares. So the, uh, that magnitude of the uh, intensity, even though we provided a thermal protection system that was not adequate, the flow entered and uh, it does burn some of the cable wire. That is the type of failure what we have faced. So afterwards we have got into a lot of uh, studies with the flow interactions with academicians and DRDO and we came up uh, and solved that problem of uh, flow interaction based flow analysis and interaction. Similarly in this field other challenges are the hypersonic aerodynamics which is not very well understood to the, uh, all of us the uh, drag reduction techniques, if you can put on the top of the nose, uh, tip, tip of the no, uh, missile and the aero spike, it will reduce the drag. So these type of configurations we are yet to try on and working on all these technologies. 3D moving grid uh, flow analysis, more and more for flow analysis, analysis methods gives us more and more insight into the uh, technical uh, interference and things to be all this new uh, information what is coming which will add our design uh, features thermal testing models for the re-entry when i am saying re-entry this means these missiles re-enter back the atmosphere the aerodynamic structure that the uh, uh, re-entry vehicle structure outside is experiencing as high as 4000 degrees centigrade it comes uh, into the atmosphere like a red hot ball it, it looks like a point with fully burning ch and charring at the uh, temperature of 400 whereas inside we have all the electronic equipments like onboard computer the guidance system the navigation system is the ins inertial navigation sensor with the gyro and accelerometers all of them has to function and their temperature cannot go more than 50 degrees one of the biggest achievement or we could only think about making agni missiles just because we were able to uh, design this RVS structure, that is, which can, which go undergoes 4,000 degrees centigrade outside, but inner layers, it will be still with uh, 50 degrees, and the electronic systems are working fine. Uh, that is the type of technology we could achieve. Then uh, I talked about the uh, missile structure, the airframe. These airframes, each section wise. It has to undergo the load test because it is going through a high. The moment the velocity is more on the system, the aerodynamic uh, disturbing force is also equally uh, pressure exerted is more. So the load test, the airframe design, uh, isogrid uh, structures, thermal thermostructural design. We even do that. We go through the thermal. We will uh, subject the sections to thermal environment and see whether some of the things are disrupted tests also to see the maximum capability or the strength uh, capability full scale total as a missile it will be integrated and we will do the load testing as a full missile and uh, we have the ground resonance test this is again a uh, learning experience for us the ground resonance test the control uh, sensors and the uh, control and the structural interactions once the missile is uh, uh, propelling and going in the atmosphere, it has always uh, some 
vibration speakers the missile will be vibrating if the sensors the uh, navigation sensors picks up that uh, vibrations and uh, amplifies then the system gets into a resonance so you have to go through all the sensors throughout the missile that none of the sensors the control interaction wise there is no amplification or no resonance developed the natural frequency of each package versus the total missile has to be checked and there is a that is the test what we do in the ground resonance test as i said the re entry vehicle structure this is the vehicle structure with the control fins it has a carbon carbon nose tip which can withstand temperature up to the as high as 6000 degrees it has two composite layers the top type of control used for long range systems where the propellant energy the thrusting energy is used to where you can have in all the four directions those uh, thrusters fired and get a roll correction and uh, then the actuation system the hydraulic as well as the electromechanical type of systems the hydraulic ones are used when the power requirement like uh, actuation turn uh, if you want a large turn edge to be moved then we go for the hydraulic system and if it is a smaller type of uh, engines to be uh, controlled then we go for a hydro mechanical systems motorized electrical and we come across the main uh, sensor package the navigation which uh, has navigation uh, with the sensors gyro and accelerometers as i said gyro senses the uh, body rates uh, of the missile and uh, accelerometers gives the acceleration information from the acceleration information again integral of acceleration velocity and velocity integral will give you the position of the missile so that with that as working on the onboard computer uh, with the guidance where to go how to go and uh, control is that how we will guide you to reach that so all the actuation system these three functionalities together the control guidance and navigation together will take you the missile from one destination to the other in a guided man, guided and controlled manner so the class of uh, gyros right we have mechanical uh, type of gyros that is the uh, dtg uh, dynamically tuned gyros their the accuracy levels are within point uh, 01 degrees per hour uh, whereas the ring laser gyros which has been already been developed by the dio we are using ring laser gyros which has an accuracy as as high as 0.001 degree per hour with uh, within um, accuracy of velocity of the order of 0.1 meter per second is can be achieved and uh, the now uh, world across the gps systems are available so we are uh, using gps system as an aided system to the main navigation systems and we are working on the stellar type of navigation that is stellar updates the star based navigation system which is under development so these uh, these systems give a fine accuracy to the uh, guidance what it performs this is the energy management guidance which i have been talking so from a, a particular uh, missile one can reach the lower most range as well as the upper most range it is up to you to choose the range feed the target coordinates and fire the missile from the launch coordinates you will be able to achieve the target like uh, if i take an a3 missile that is from 1500 we have designed the missile from 1500 km to 3000 km so that uh, uh, is achievable through by this guidance scheme single uh, missile itself it is on board trajectory reshaping because of the target coordinates where the destination is men mentioned that is the uh, guidance which i had worked on a uh, range independent uh, uh, pitch program initially variable range through guidance uh, guidance will take care of all the deviations of the propulsions and uh, no thrust termination it's by math mathematics i don't want to get into the details of this uh, mathematics and all then we have uh, for the payload uh, vtp guidance to fine tune the uh, velocity errors to as low as 0.1 meter per second or even less our intention is to make to zero the some of the cases it will come as close as uh, if gps is working as close to zero the missile electronics as you all know you are all in the world of real time systems 
with uh, high computing facilities, uh, bus based architecture, all the communication within the missiles are all 52 to 53 bus based.